I remember reading something around, you know, would it be easier to teach ESG and sustainability specialists finance? Or was it easier to teach finance professionals ESG and sustainability? And we decided on the second one. Um, and to do that, I think one is just trying to reduce the, uh, um, I guess, the obstacles or the the um, the new things that are involved in the conversation. So first thing that we thought was helpful was actually to bring the data to the financial system, because typically when you want to have a data led conversation with finance professionals, um, they need to be able to see it, feel it, manipulate it, right? And if the data is over there, then the easiest shutdown response is, well, I don't know what's going on with the data. So bringing that data into the system was step one. I think the next step for us was just looking at, okay, is there a way to integrate this within the performance management conversations? That means that, you know, it might start a little bit like a tick box or a theatrical exercise where it's like, oh, the group says we now need to look at these ESG things in this meeting. So let's quickly look at it. But you find that actually within any community, finance functions included, you know, there is a cross function, um, so a cross section of people that naturally like have been waiting for this to happen and are really passionate. And it's like, oh gosh, it's like manna from heaven that we're actually getting into this. And then you get that ripple effect of not necessarily, you know, one change agent, but actually you start to see pockets of it in different parts of the business. Um, and then, you know, you keep going on across the various um, spectrums of finance. So, you know, the next step we're looking at now is, okay, how do we bring the financial controllers on board? So the data is in the system. We're talking about it in the BPM. So, you know, we know that CSRD, uh, which is one of the EU regulations, is coming up and we need to assure this data. How do we get the financial controllers who so far have been, you know, isolated from this conversation to understand, look, a lot of this data is reported via a process, which is not very different to many financial processes. You need to capture the data, manipulate it, and report it, right? So if we explain the process to you, if we explain the controls to you that are still being managed by the experts, but if you understand it, can you ask one or two intelligent questions based on your experience, right? And you will find that because you know what the risks are from a financial reporting point of view, that when you get a response back, the follow-up question will come naturally, right? And with that, you essentially build up the standard of the reporting. Um, and I think the story carries on. You know, you can take it to other aspects of the function. But I, I think really you want to start by first not making it so hard or so distant. So, you know, bringing is it the mountain to Mohammed or uh, other uh, in the reverse so that, you know, once it's there, I think. So, so what were those early questions? You said yeah. you put them into reviews. Give us yeah. some examples of those early questions that you asked and make them start thinking about. Okay. I mean, on the financial planning and analysis side, I mean, a number of you may smile, but simple things like, okay, can we get a forecast for what we're going to deliver this year against this long-term decade ambition, right? You're talking about carbon reporting type stuff? Or? Um, it could be carbon, it could be community impact, it could be water, it could be anything, right? A lot of big companies have made long-term commitments, right? And I think maybe for the initial part of the decade, it would have been more around strategic reflection as to how we go about, you know, delivering this. But I think we're now halfway into the decade and we really need to get about the business of delivery, right? So, okay, we need to get to, I'm making it up, 10 in the next five years, what do you plan to do this year, right? And, you know, it's not for the finance community to answer that necessarily, but you sit down and partner with the, you know, relevant function that's got the expertise to say, well, what can we do this year? And some functions find that easier to do than others, and you adjust your style appropriately. But once you have a number on the page, the type of questions you ask is like, okay, well, great that we have a number for the year. We're not going to wait until the end of the year to check how we're doing, let's try and phase that. And that becomes another like, oh, you know, you're asking lots of difficult questions, but it's valuable because once you phase it, whether quarterly or monthly, then you can say, okay, how do we do this month? Did we do as you expected? Um, yes or no? And if yes, and it's a lot better, what can we take and transfer to other areas? If no, then what surprised you? And you find that when you start to have those conversations, like it doesn't sound very different to a financial conversation. It's just the initial block is, well, it doesn't have pounds and pence, so 
I don't like I don't feel like I'm equipped to be involved here. But once you demystify that, then you realize actually you are precisely the person that needs to be in that conversation to kind of help drive it forward. So that's one example. 